today's video, we are going to be discussing one of the single greatest feelings on planet Earth, and that is uh, sniping one of your idiot league mates in the middle of a fantasy football draft, especially on the running back position. Okay, so today we're talking about seven running backs that I think you need to be jumping on top of your league mates for and getting them in drafts, getting them to be like, ah, fuck, I was about to take him, but you're not anymore because I took him. All right. So we're doing this in a data structured way. I looked at two pieces of data. We looked at ADP, average draft position from paid leagues right now, underdog fantasy, best ball tens, FFPC, so high stakes leagues. And then we looked at ADP, average draft position from the ESPNs, the Yahoo's, the CBS's, the NFL.com's. We took the average of those. And then we're looking at the running backs where there's the biggest discrepancy, meaning the guys that are in the paid leagues, the people that are buying in and staying on top of the market and the trends right now are drafting these running backs a lot higher than the non-paid mock draft, uh, you know, casual type of player. And it doesn't always mean that these guys are right as compared to these guys, but it does mean that they're probably a little bit closer to like where the actual depth chart is. They're on top of training report, training camp reports and stuff like that. So they're probably an indicator that these guys need to be picked a little bit higher than they're going on these platforms. So we're going to talk about the seven running backs with the biggest discrepancies right now between paid leagues and casual leagues and why you need to be drafting each of those seven guys with some of your later round picks all right it's summertime so you know i came pre-tucked we're gonna get right into the first dude and that is mr rico suave dowdle dallas cowboys running back you may or may not even know this man if you played fantasy last year and you were still paying attention down the stretch, you might remember him a little bit as he started to play compliment to Tony Pollard quite a bit. Now Tony Pollard is out of town and is just Zeke and it's Rico Dowdle and there are guys like Deuce Vaughn and Royce Freeman. But the fact of the matter is that Rico Dowdle is going 25 spots higher in paid ADP leagues than he is on ESPN. Now Rico Dowdle, not a special talent by any means, but he is five foot eleven. He is 215 pounds. He ran a four five four 40 yard dash. Last year on limited work, he was 18th in juke rate, which is player profilers just overall elusiveness rating. So top 18 among all running backs. Yards created per touch. He was ninth. So you're talking about a top 10 dude in that efficiency metric. Very, very good in the passing game. Almost nine yards per reception, which is a very, very, very good mark. And again, I I've, I've shown you guys this chart throughout the summer because I want to draft a lot of Zeke. And the reason is the opportunities in the Dallas backfield on a team that just led the entire NFL in scoring is voluminous. All right. Look back at the last three years. And I would say this: these aren't even like great running back years for them because these are not the prime Zeke years anymore. But just the overall sheer average of running back opportunities, goal line carries, running back touchdowns and running back yards, which you could see bolded on the bottom, that is the average of the last three years. So you're talking about an average of 513 overall running back opportunities, 19 goal line carries, 18 total touchdowns per year, and 2,349 yards. There is a lot of production to be had in this backfield where we don't really know where it's coming from. I want to leave the majority of my drafts with Ezekiel Elliott, as long as his ADP stays where it is, 11th, 10th round, probably all the way up until like the eighth-ish round. If I don't get him, I will absolutely settle for Rico Dowdle and hope this plays itself out into a committee. Uh, again, it is, it is super possible that Rico Dowdle is just, just a cone and like Royce Freeman or someone like that is the other man in the committee, but Royce is on his fifth team in, in four years. So like that's, that's probably saying something. I think Rico Dowdle is the first guy to keep your eye on late in drafts. Running back number two is Chase Brown, Cincinnati Bengals. All right. We know Joe Mixon is out of there. We know Joe Mixon during his seven year tenure in Cincinnati has averaged over 20 opportunities per game. Now, Cincinnati also brought in Zach Moss to be a little bit of a thumper, but probably more of a pass blocking back because they need someone they can trust back there to protect Joey Shiesty. Now, Zach Moss has been a super mediocre running back outside of three or four weeks last year in Indianapolis. The deal that he got in Cincinnati was two years, I think $8 million, is not what DeAndre Swift got, the three for 24, is not what Saquon Barkley got, the three for 36, 39, whatever he got. There, these are there's levels to this shit. All right, just because Zach Moss had a few good fantasy games for you last year does not mean Zach Moss is all of a sudden Jonathan Taylor because he's not. The reports out of camp right now on Chase Brown have been that he has been taking the majority of the first team snaps. Now, hopefully, we get a glimpse at this first team offense in the preseason games that are coming up, and we can get a better picture of which starting running back is getting on there first with Joe, who is the goal line back, who is the third down back, who is the two and four minute drill back. But Chase Brown brings a level of explosiveness to this offense in this backfield that Zach Moss just simply 
does not. All right. Chase Chase Brown is good size, too. It's not like he is a smaller back. He's got that workhorse build. He was the workhorse back uh, at Illinois when he was in college, and he performed well last year as a rookie and got more and more involved as the year went by. They started trusting him a lot more. So I think Chase Brown is probably one of the breakout players of training camp this year. And without a doubt, he's going 18 spots lower on ESPN, 29 spots lower on NFL.com than he is on paid leagues. All right. So Chase Brown needs to be an immediate priority target around ahead of the ESPN or the NFL.com ADPs to snipe yo league mates with. All right. If you're looking for other players to snipe, we also just did this wide receiver version a couple days ago. So if you need some wide receivers to add to the list, I will link that video down below as well. Let's go to probably the most hyped player on this list. That is running back number three. It's Devon Achan. Now, Devon Achan is going seven spots lower on ESPN and Yahoo. Now, it doesn't really seem like a huge gap, but when Devon Achan is the RB7 or 8 on Underdog Fantasy, the end of the second round, seven spots is a huge portion of the draft movement here. So it's not like anybody doesn't know who or what Devon Achan is at this point, but I'm not sure that like the casuals really understand just how good he was last year, okay? And he was great even when Raheem Mostert was on the field and, and vice versa. They were both great in tandem together because it is such a concentrated backfield and they use them in such diverse versatile ways like Devon Chan in the nine healthy games he played last year where he played more than like five percent of the snaps because he wasn't hurt he averaged over 20 PPR fantasy points per game that is league winning levels right and it's anyone's uh, guess as to whether or not he stays healthy for the entire year he's good enough to obviously demand a shitload more in terms of volume and overall opportunities this year in that offense. And I think we'll see obviously that spike in fantasy production because of it. So Devontae Chan is, is one of those dudes that we saw over and over and over again. He has that Chris Johnson effect. He has that Jamal Charles effect where it's like, sure, you can give him 12 to 14 touches if you want him to hold up over the course of the year. And that's probably fine. And a, a lot of people use that sort of like buzz phrase. It's like, oh, he only needs like limited touches because he's so explosive. It's like, no, those types of dudes really only come around like once every five to 10 years. Devontae Chan is legitimately a dude that you can give 12 to 14 touches and produce as if you just gave him 22 touches because he could take any single play to the cribbo, all right? So Devon A. Chan is a dude who, if he starts if he starts dropping in your home leagues to running back like 12, 13, 14, the upside there is legitimately league winning, so you cannot let him drop any further. We're going to package the next two guys together because they are teammates. It is Jalen Warren and Najee Harris. Both of them are going in rounds seven, eight, nine of paid leagues, and even further down in these ESPN, NFL, CBS drafts. Now, I talked a bunch about Najee Harris in my must draft players video a couple days ago. I will link that down below as well. The overall excitement around this offense is a, a few different parts, and I'll try to recap it quickly so I don't just yap for 30 minutes. But the same reasons I'm excited about Najee Harris, I'm excited about Jalen Warren. This offensive line is going to be a ton better. They have now used back-to-back -back first round picks on offensive linemen. They also use their first, second, and fourth round pick this year on offensive linemen. They will be a million times better. They have Arthur Smith coming over as the OC, and I know Arthur Smith gets a bunch of flack, but I promise you if Desmond Ritter wasn't the quarterback, that team would have been pretty fucking good. And he has done a lot of good things with running backs. You look at both years, he was the OC in Tennessee, Derrick Henry's biggest years. You look at Corderell Patterson, what he did in 2021. Tyler Algiers, a rookie, went over 1,000 yards. Like Arthur Smith, yes, he, he did not utilize B. John Robinson correctly last year, but historically he has been great with running backs. And you look at the structure of this team, very similar to the Falcons last year, where they, they have legitimately like one good pass catcher and multiple good tight ends. Arthur Smith ran two tight end sets at the highest rate in the NFL last year with Atlanta. He's going to do that again in Pittsburgh. I was just listening to, there's a great series that Tony actually recommended to me where there's this uh, reporter, this NFL reporter that interviews one beat reporter from every single team. He puts one out. I think it's every day, if not every other day. And he talked to someone from the Pittsburgh Steelers and they were talking about how this team is going to overutilize two tight end sets. And it makes sense with Pat Fryermuth and uh, Darnell Washington. If you guys remember him coming out of Georgia last year, that dude is like six foot eight, 300 pounds. He is basically an offensive tackle on the outside for you. That happens to be athletic as well. So, these running backs are going to have an extra offensive lineman on the field at all times, along with all these draft capital linemen that they are investing into year after year after year. They also have Russ under center. And Russ is like obviously not the the prime Russ. He's more cone-like Russ at this point. But 
Kenny Pickett was the ultimate cone. Anytime you have an offense that's not running through Kenny Pickett and is alternatively running through a dude like Russ, they're going to have more success. They're going to have more plays. They're going to have more opportunities. They're going to have more scoring opportunities, most importantly. And also in this beat report, which this doesn't seem outlandish whatsoever, when you only have a dude like George Pickens, when you only have a dude like Pat Firemuth to throw the ball to, you don't have any real weapons behind those two. I know before you guys come for me at Roman Wilson, Roman Wilson, that guy stinks. He can't separate. He's already out of camp. He just suffered, uh, I think, a, a relatively serious hamstring injury. So he's cooked for right now. The amount of dump offs and the amount of screen plays that they're going to run for these running backs is going to be an extremely high rate. All right. So this offense will run through the running backs. This offense will push through the running backs. It will go George Pickens, Pat Firemuth, and every other play will be either Najee Harris or Jalen Warren. All right. So both of these guys, you need to roster one of them leaving your draft. I promise you that the Steelers offense will be one of the most underrated entering the 2024 season. Everybody hates Najee. Everybody hates Arthur Smith. I get it, but you are incorrect about that. So we've got a top five. We've got two more for you. But if you want all of our rankings, if you want all of our must draft players, our complete fade list, if you want all of the best work that we do throughout the summer, plus a lot of other cool tools that we're introducing for the first time this year, like our tiebreaker matrix, which helps you decide on the clock uh, between similar ranked players with things like offensive line rank and offensive pace rank and all that kind of stuff. It is available in our draft guide, which goes live in 24 hours. It goes live tomorrow, August 1st, depending on when you're watching this. It will become full price, but it is at a discounted pre-order price right now up on the site on bdge.co, bdge.co. But, but the cheapest, the least expensive way to get the draft guide is on Underdog Fantasy. All right, so if you go download the app, Underdog Fantasy, it'll be the first link in the notes down below, and you deposit $10, that's it, $10 or more, you can deposit whatever you want on the platform, and you use our code BDGE. So you download Underdog Fantasy, use BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, you'll get the draft guide emailed to you tomorrow, all right? So everybody asking uh, when the email access will come, it will come tomorrow, I promise, August 1st is when you will be getting that email. You will also get a deposit bonus so you'll have extra money to play with on your account. You can do a bunch of best ball drafts on there or some pickums because they will also give you a free square of Patrick Mahomes over 0.5 passing yards for week one. All right. It is the best deal in fantasy football right now. Do not worry even a bit about your fantasy draft because our fantasy football draft guide this year, the BDGE 2024 fantasy football draft guide will be the best product in the industry. It will be the best draft guide that we have ever put out. BDGE.co. Get it for a limited discount price right now until tomorrow or get it through underdogfantasy.com. You know who else is an underdog? Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford is one of the biggest uh, discrepancies between paid leagues and non-paid leagues. And I'm kind of surprised because like I, f I feel as if Jerome Ford helped a lot of casual players last year. Like he was a really rock solid pickup once Nick Chubb went down. And I made a video last week just saying how Nick Chubb was one of the worst picks in fantasy football this year. And a lot of people were coming after me and you, I I'm going to be right. All right. It was like, I made the video and then uh, there was a report like Nick Chubb is running drills and he's le moving laterally and he's doing these 5,000 pound squats. And everyone's like, you're going to be so fucking wrong about it. And then the next day it was like Nick Chubb not expected to be ready for the beginning of the season. Nick Chubb is not going to play for the first four, maybe six weeks of the season. OK, and then maybe he gets ramped back up. There's usually like a four to six week ramp up period to get back to where you were maybe prior to the injury. All right. Case in point, Jerome Ford is a running back to own in Cleveland here. He was great last year. He was great in the receiving game. Second most receiving touchdowns amongst all running backs. Only Christian McCaffrey had more receiving touchdowns than him last year. Uh, I think the style of offense that they're going to, a more spread style, will favor Jerome Ford because that is like a runway style of, uh, of offense. You can get the carry, see the hole, and blast through it. And that is the style of player he is. He is a bigger back that once he gets going he is tough to catch and we saw that with many breakaway plays last year so Jerome Ford is a dude that like if you kind of punt the position and you're around 9 10 11 12 whatever and you need like a, a, a low-end RB2 that'll put you up 10 11 12 PPR fantasy points per game look no further than Mr. Jerome Ford because he's just getting disrespected right now and I'm starting to take it personally all right Jill McLaughlin is number seven on this list. And one other note going back to Pittsburgh, actually, I just want to say, I think Pat Fryermuth is starting to shape up as one of the single best tight end values in all of drafts, just because Arthur Smith, great at doing running back stuff, also great at getting production out of tight ends. And Pat Fryermuth is 
second in the pecking order. It is literally just George Pickens and then Pat Fryermuth. And then when we talk about the Denver backfield, there's been a lot of hype about a lot of guys, you know, everybody except Javante Williams. But I think the pendulum has started to swing way too fucking far in the other direction where there was like, oh, he's going to get cut. And now every report out of Denver is that Javante Williams looks back to his pre-ACL tear. Uh, Javante Williams looks lean. Javante Williams looks like by far and away the best back. So uh, predictably, Javante Williams is the, the back to own in Denver. And pretty much all the beat reporters are like, yeah, this is going to be a uh, Javante Williams backfield with Jaleel McLaughlin probably taking 10 to 12 touches a game. He is a smaller, explosive back that is really good at pass catching. And I think that will be what this offense is, all right? They're a team that's going to be trailing a lot. They're a team that is going to need to throw the ball a lot. And I think that bodes well for both him and Javante. When we look back at last year, three of the five most targeted players in the Denver offense were running backs. It was Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, and then Javante, Jaleel, and Samaja Pirine, all right? So they use their backs really heavily. It's a Sean Payton offense. Like, they, this is what their offense does. They dink and dump, and they get the ball out to protect their quarterback around the line of scrimmage quickly. That will be heavily through the running backs, and it's going to be Javante. Estime is going to be a breather back that can get downhill and maybe be used in short uh, short yardage situation that's pretty irrelevant for fantasy football. And then Jaleel in the two- and four-minute drills and pass-catching drills and all that kind of stuff. So Jaleel in a PPR league is a guy that you can get in like the 14th, 15th round that will have your league mates being like, fuck, he was my next pick. Not anymore because your ass just took him. All right, those are the seven running backs. We'll recap it real quick. Rico Dowdle, Chase Brown, Devon A. Chan, Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, Jerome Ford, Jaleel McLaughlin that need to be on your radar because they are going way higher in paid leagues than they are in your casual leagues, all right? And your friends are going to think they're going to be able to get them down at their casual league ADPs. They're not because you're going to snipe their ass, all right? And if you want to snipe every good player in fantasy football this year, go get the draft guide. We will do that for you, all right? BDGE.co or download underdogfantasy.com. Use our code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. And that big girl will be out tomorrow. We'll be updating it in real time throughout the summer as well. You'll get all the preseason game recap right up. So we'll help you stay on top of everything that happens that's relevant for fantasy football throughout those games. Rankings, of course, will be updated throughout the entire summer as well, leading up to kickoff. I love you. Smoochies.